Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Paul once again. Thanks for uh, browsing through our channel tonight and uh, watching this video. Tonight, I want to talk a few minutes about uh, slipwood capital femoral epiphysis. As always, you are welcome to visit our website at uh, www.usmlevideos.net. That is www usmlevideos.net where we have posted hundreds of videos for usml examination and uh, so many of uh, the students actually writing to me how these videos have been extremely useful in their preparation for usml examination so feel free to write an email to us your comments are always appreciated so let us go ahead tonight and talk a few minutes about Slipwood capital femoral epiphysis. I will say SCFA for the sake of brevity. So, slipwood capital femoral epiphysis, the basic facts, first of all, the most commonly this disease affects adolescent males. So, whenever you see a patient with uh, obesity, an adolescent male with obesity limping, and with hip pain, always suspect slipper capital femoral epiphysis because that is what they want to take from that question. This condition is characterized by the displacement of the proximal femoral epiphysis due to disruption of the growth plate. So this is the actually the displacement of the proximal femoral epiphysis. It occurs at the growth plate and uh, actually it is the it is not the head of the femur that displaces in that aspect SCFE is a misnomer because the stabulum is in its normal place the femoral capitus is in the normal place what is displaced is the portion of the femur which is distal to the growth plate so that is the main thing you need to remember. So don't get fooled by the name. Slip capital femoral epiphysis. It's not the femoral capital that has displaced. It is actually the portion distal to the growth plate because of the disruption of the growth plate. That's a very important point you need to remember. Now, this condition occurs in adolescence in boys between 10 and 17 years of age and in girls between 8 and 15 years of age so the things varies it is bilateral in 25 percent of cases but in most patients it is unilateral if you leave it unattended the complications includes osteoarthritis avascular necrosis also osteoarthritis of the hip is a complication in the long term the short term avascular necrosis of the hip is a potential and a dangerous complication of slipper capital femoral epiphysis and it also can cause chondrolysis the uh, disintegration of the chondrium in that place now when you do physical examination what do you find if you internally rotate the hip there will be a lot of pain but external rotation of the hip will be easy. So there is obligatory external rotation of the hip with gentle flexion of the hip. That is a characteristic sign of uh, slipper capital femoral epiphysis. So you always diagnose it on clinical examination first. Examine both hips always. Even if a patient comes with uh, knee pain, you should examine their hips because in many many cases patients with SAFE comes with knee pain and you examine their knees you imagine their uh, knees you do you take x-rays and CT scans MRIs you say the knee is fine and you will send the patient home and they will come back with a more serious disorder so in every patient who comes with uh, knee pain you should always examine their hips too because SAFE it gives referred pain in the knee even though it's a, a disease of the hip joint now how do you treat this condition 
before that let us talk a few words about diagnosis you always take uh, an anteroposterior x-ray of the hip joint and also the frog lateral view because when you, in in ap view you may not see that posterior displacement but if, when you take the frog lateral view you see that posterior displacement very very clearly now treatment how do you treat it first hospitalize the patient then do the skin traction and then you consult an orthopedic surgeon to do surgical correction they put the screws and metal plates into the growth plate to fix this it in uh, severe cases we do actually osteotomy that's in a proximal femoral osteotomy when the patient has severe SEFA. So let us uh, go again around the most important points. Typical patient with SEFA is an adolescent, obese or overweight male. That's the typical patient. Then what is the most common cause of misdiagnosis? Referred pain to the knee. So in all adolescents with referred pain to the knee examine the hip to rule out SCFA. That's a very very important point. Now one point about diagnosis those lines are called cleese lines. In cleese lines you actually draw a line on the lateral aspect of the femoral epiphysis. In a normal individuals the line actually intersects the hip joint. But in patients with SAFA, this line actually goes out of the hip joint. That's a very, very important point. If cleese line does not intersect, then you should always think of SAFA. So, cleese line is a very, very important diagnostic factor when you take X-rays. So, cleanse line, don't uh, miss it. It, it. it passes outside the epiphysis in SCFA. It intersects the epiphysis in normal individuals. That's very important. The other point is blanch sign of steel. Blanch sign of steel is also characteristic of SCFA. Now, let us see a common question. A 14 year old adolescent obese male came with uh, the complaint of uh, left hip pain. For the previous six weeks, he is unable to bear weight on the left left leg. He is uh, limping. The pain is worsening with activity and decreasing uh, with rest. And he reports that over the last three weeks, actually his pain is getting worse and worse. And he started to limp. Past medical history is significant for hypothyroidism. Uh, exam on physical examination, there is a painful internal rotation and a painless and free external rotation of the hip joint. What do you suspect in this patient? The answer is SCFA. You see, there are a few keywords in this question. Obese adolescent male. He is limping for six weeks. He also has past history of hypothyroidism. You see, hypothyroidism is the risk factor for SCFA. So when you see hypothyroidism, you should always think about SCFA. I mean, when, uh, when you see an adolescent obese male with the history of hypothyroidism limping, it is almost always SCFA. So you need to keep those points in mind. So if you have any questions feel free to contact me and uh, that's about SCFA. As always you are free to visit our website at www.usmlevideos.net that is www.usmlevideos.net. Thank you this is Dr. Paul. God bless you.